Today's lecture is on organization and function of autonomic nervous system. Learning objective, at the end of this lecture, you will be able to differentiate between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and discuss responses of effector organ to autonomic nerve impulses. Nervous system. As we all know, nervous system is going to have two main divisions. The first one is central nervous system, whose main function is to process, interpret, store information, and issue order to muscle, glands, and organs. And the second division is peripheral nervous system, which transmits the information to and from the central nervous system. So this central nervous system is again going to consist of brain and spinal cord, whereas peripheral nervous system is going to consist of somatic nervous system, whose main function is to control the skeletal muscle, and autonomic nervous system, which mainly regulates the gland, blood vessels, internal organ. So this autonomic nervous system is again divided into two. The first one is called as sympathetic nervous system, which mobilizes body for action and energy output. And this sympathetic nervous system is also called as adrenergic nervous system. And the second division is parasympathetic nervous system, which is also called as cholinergic nervous system, whose main function is to conserve energy and maintain a quiet state. So next, we will see autonomic nervous system. So what do you mean by autonomic nervous system? It is a system that acts unconsciously to regulate body functions like heart rate, respiratory rate, digestion, and urination. Autonomic nervous system is also called as involuntary. Why? Because it is going to control the functions of the body automatically according to the demand. ANS is going to innovate the cardiac muscles present in the heart, smooth muscles present in the wall of the visceral organ, blood vessels, and glands. Thus, it is going to control the involuntary activities like heart rate, respiratory rate, digestion, and urination. Next, anatomical component. The anatomical component of ANS is of three types or three components. The first component is known as peak ganglionic neuron. So, cell bodies is basically located in the CNS, that is in the brain or spinal cord. And the second one is ganglia. So this is the place where the p-ganglionic neuron is going to form synapses with the third component of ANS that is post-ganglionic neuron. And post-ganglionic neuron, you can see this is the third component of ANS and here the cell bodies are located basically in the ganglia that is outside the CNS. So the component of ANS are pre-ganglionic neuron, ganglia and post-ganglionic neuron. Division of ANS. ANS is divided into two. The first one is known as sympathetic nervous system, which is also called as fight or flight. Why? Because it is going to get activated during exercise, excitement, and emergency. So this system is going to prepare the body during emergency situation. And the second division is parasympathetic division, which is also called as rest and digest. So this Division is mainly concerned with conserving energy. So here it is going to conserve and restore the body energy and replenishes the nutrient store. Next, we will see the comparison between the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic nervous system is also called as thoracolumbar outflow according to its origin. That means sympathetic nervous system originated from the thoraco and lumbar region of spinal cord. Thoraco means that is from T1 to T2L and lumbar that is from L1 and L2. So that is why sympathetic nervous system is also called as thoraco lumbar outflow. Parasympathetic nervous system is also called as cranial sacral outflow according to its origin. Cranial means it is going to be derived or originated from four cranial nerve that is third, seventh, ninth and tenth. Third one is called as oculomotor nerve. Seventh one is facial nerve. Ninth one is glossopharyngeal nerve. And the tenth one is vagus nerve. And sacral region of spinal cord, that is S2 to S4. So according to its origin, parasympathetic nervous system is called as craniosacral outflow. Next, we will see the length of preganglionic fiber. In sympathetic, it is short and it is located bilaterally to spinal cord. Whereas in parasympathetic, it is long and it is located near to the effector organ. Next, length of postganglionic fiber. 
So it is very long in sympathetic, whereas it is very short in parasympathetic. Next, neurotransmitter, which is released by preganglionic exon in sympathetic and as well as in parasympathetic, it is same, that is acetylcholine. Whereas the neurotransmitter released by postganglionic exon is different. In sympathetic, is norepinephrine or noradrenaline, except the sweat gland, which is going to release acetylcholine. Remaining all is going to release norepinephrine only. And in parasympathetic, it is again acetylcholine. So remember, in parasympathetic, the neurotransmitter released by the preganglionic exon and postganglionic exon is same, that is acetylcholine only. Whereas in sympathetic, the preganglionic neuron is going to release acetylcholine, whereas postganglionic neuron is going to release norepinephrine. Next, receptors. So receptors of sympathetic nervous system are called as adrenergic receptor, which is going to consist of alpha receptor, which is again of two types, that is alpha 1 and alpha 2, and beta receptor, which is again classified into three types, that is beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. Next, receptor in parasympathetic nervous system are called as cholinergic receptor. It is again of two types. Muscaranic receptor starting from M1 to M5. So totally five muscaranic receptor. Next, nicotinic receptor, which is of two types, NN. So the location of NN is in autonomic ganglion, adrenal medulla, and central nervous system. Whereas NN, whose location is in neuromuscular junction. Next, we will see the action of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system on various organs. In heart, the sympathetic nervous system is going to increase all the properties of the heart. That is, it is going to increase the heart rate, it is going to increase the force of contraction, etc. Whereas, parasympathetic is going to decrease it. Next on blood vessels, you can see skin and mesentery is going to get vasoconstructed. Whereas the skeletal muscle and coronary and renal is going to go for vasodilation. Whereas in parasympathetic nervous system, it is not at all innervated. Pupil. See, in sympathetic nervous system, they are going to cause this midriasis mainly by causing dilation of pupillary muscles. Whereas in parasympathetic nervous system, it is going to cause this meiosis by causing contraction of constricted pupillary muscles. So remember, in sympathetic, the pupil is going to undergo midriasis, that is dilation of pupil is going to happen. Whereas in parasympathetic meiosis, that is constriction of pupil, that is small size of pupil. Whereas in midriasis, the pupil size is going to get increased. Bronchi. So here, the bronchi is going to get dilated. That condition is known as bronchodilation in sympathetic. Whereas in parasympathetic bronchospasm, so it is going to cause the constriction of bronchi. So that condition is called as bronchospasm, mainly by causing the contraction. Next in GIT and urinary bladder, sympathetic nervous system is going to relax the uterine wall and it is going to contract the sphincter. So exact opposite is parasympathetic, where parasympathetic is going to contract the uterine wall and relaxes the Spincher. Sweat gland, sympathetic is going to increase the secretion, whereas parasympathetic is going to have no effect. On sex organ, sympathetic is going to cause us ejaculation and parasympathetic erection. Okay, so this is the difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And important thing is that there are some organs which is innovated by one division of autonomic system only. For example, you can see here sweat gland, most blood vessels and ventricles of the heart, they are going to be get innovated only by the sympathetic, whereas ciliary muscle of eye is going to get innovated by parasympathetic. Next, we will see the functions of autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system conveys all the output from central nervous system to rest of the body but doesn't convey the output from the CNS to motor innovation of skeletal muscle. So the main processes regulated by ANS are contraction and relaxation of a smooth muscle, all exocrine and endocrine secretion, heartbeat, energy metabolism. It affects many other systems, that is immune system and somatosensory system.
Therefore, autonomic nervous system is going to act as a control system and maintain homeostasis. Most of its actions are involuntary, such as heart rate, digestion, respiratory rate, salivation, perspiration, dilation of pupil, excretion, urine discharge, etc. Thank you.